So now we're on part three of um, this module. And um, now I want you to really think about, um, you know, what you're doing with technology within your classroom. Um, oftentimes, uh, we think that we're using technology and really all we've done is, and I love this quote, a worksheet is still a worksheet even if it's stored on a Google Drive. And so there's been this big push to use things like Google Classroom and whatnot. But if you haven't that, you know, if, if the push that you've made is only to, you know, move things that you would have done in the classroom online, then is that really bringing technology into your classroom in the best way possible? So uh, Linda Darling Hammond actually uh, was interviewed and asked about this. How can we effectively use technology in the classroom? And she gave these three um, recommendations. So one, learning has to be interactive. Um, it can be interactive with even multiple people in the classroom. It can be interactive with the instructor. It can be interactive globally. Um, but that, you know, the student needs to be interacting in some way with the, uh, um, with the technology in order for it to really be useful. Uh, technology must be used to explore, design, and create versus drill and kill. You know, so much of the education, traditional education has been on, you know, uh, memorizing math facts and, um, and uh, identifying letters, which are all really good skills. And there's a lot of programs that um, actually allow students to, in a fun way, um, you know, practice these skills. But, you know, the technology also can move further beyond that. And so we need to think of ways that, that we can have the students exploring, designing, and creating um, based on whatever standard they're trying to make, meet. And then finally, the balance of teachers and technology. You know, just having um, technology uh, and then the teacher kind of being there and monitoring actually takes away from a lot of the learning opportunities that can happen within the classroom. Paul talked about this in his um, presentation, you know, the fact that he wasn't as engaged in their learning process um, actually slowed a lot of them down. So are we innovating or are we digitizing? So um, here, you know, are we, that goes back to the, are we just putting the worksheet online or are we actually coming up with new and creative ways to have students um, interact with the content and the instruction? Um, so that's why I put in here about blended learning. Uh, blended learning means that you have online, individual, and and face-to-face uh, -face, um uh, content, you have online, individual, and face-to-face -face instruction. And um, so it's not just one or the other, but um, you really bring in both things. So I've tried to do that with this class, with creating online modules, um, having you guys work in groups, um, also um, presenting and um, having class discussions face-to-face. -face. And I've tried to talk to each one of you individually as well, uh, especially when I have you in group activities. Um, then just that there should be multiple avenues to access the content, strategies for using video and audio to, to scaffold the independent learning so that, you know, you're integrating these strategies so that you can help your students access this. Um, and then, of course, opportunities to adapt the instruction based on real-time data. So um, when you're using technology, you should also constantly be keeping um, records and reflective information on exactly what's going on so you can figure out, ooh, what do I need to do to make sure that my learners are supported in accessing as much of the information as possible? And also in demonstrating their um, their ability to understand or apply these um, the, the skills or the content that you have presented. And then um, change to engage in more meaningful face-to-face -face conversations. So um, one of the things that I've also tried to do is, um, you know, have all of the different videos online after the class so that you can relax a little bit more um, about whether you're going to be getting the information um, in class and rather, um, you know, uh, engage in these meaningful conversations uh, when we are together that um, that is uh, relevant to the topic that we're talking about, but not necessarily part of the PowerPoint or whatever. So that I bring us back to the universal design for learning, um, and this is where we change the curriculum to meet the needs of all learners. Remember, differentiation of instruction changes 
um, the curriculum to meet the students' needs. This is actually designing your curriculum and your instruction to fit all learners ahead of time. Um, and so we have the multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation, and multiple means of action and expression. Uh, we've already done the um, other module that was on UDL, and then we also created our lesson plans, and then we talked about this in class. So I'm not going to go too much on this. All right, so for this next part, you can choose between two TED Talks. Um, the first one is uh, Teaching Methods for Inspiring um, the Student of the Future, or the second one is Blended Technology and Classroom Learning. So in order to access these, I will have these below the short video that I've just gone over here, and it will say Part 3A and Part 3B. Um, and as you're watching the video, I just want you to think about how this will inform, uh, the information from this talk will inform your teaching. 